Good morning, St. Andrews. I'm Dana Leota, and it is so good to be here with you this morning on this beautiful day as we are rounding out that corner to summer, which means that we are approaching wedding season. Of course, we've got the weddings that were planned for this year, but we've also got all the weddings that had to be put off from last year that everybody is finally planning. And I have the honor of officiating a couple weddings this summer. And as I was preparing for one of them in just a few weeks, I pulled out a passage that I love to use in wedding ceremonies. It comes from Ephesians 5, and you surely have heard this passage before. It starts in verse 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great but I'm speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Now, this passage seems so obviously fitting for a wedding ceremony. The two shall become one flesh, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. But my favorite part of it is actually the second verse, verse 32, those first few words. It says, this mystery is great. Here we're talking about the mystery of a marriage and a man and woman becoming one flesh. But I think this relates to all relationships and God has been speaking new words from this passage into my life this week as well. Relationships are mysterious. Have you ever felt that before? I think back to some of my relationships, my roommate from college, my friends in high school, and I think about the ups and the downs that we experienced. There were good times, there was laughter, there were moments of connection, and there were times of deep hurt. There were times of frustration and disappointment. And yet it felt like the relationship was so much bigger than the sum of its parts. There was something bigger happening there. Some of these relationships sustained and some didn't. I don't keep in touch with some of these people, but they, played a very important role in my life and that's not something I can let go of. Even the relationships I have today, my family relationships, you really can't define one relationship as either good or bad. There is something mysterious about us interacting with one another and what happens as a result of those interactions and those engagements with each other. Now it states right here, it's pretty clear, this is a reflection of Christ's relationship with us. Not just marriage, but all of these relationships. The mystery of relationship is a reflection of Christ engaging us. Our relationship to God can be complicated. We can have the ups and the downs. We can have the moments of connection and the moments of distance. But what remains true is that the mystery of this relationship is so much bigger than those particular moments. It is not defined by them. It is greater than them and it is outside of them. Our relationship with God is a mystery, but it is what brings value into our lives. The willingness to engage each other us and Christ engaging each other. And the beauty of that is that Christ engages us even when we don't know how to turn back and reciprocate. Christ chases us down, pursues us, just as a marriage would, a friendship would. And I think of the relationships that I've had from that perspective, and I'm so grateful for how they shaped me, for what they brought into my life, and for how they reflected a relationship with Christ. I hope you go today considering those relationships, maybe ones that you have lost, maybe ones that have changed over time, and you consider them in the fullness of what they were, the fullness of how that interaction, that willingness to engage affected you in your life and shaped you and shaped who you are and showed you who Christ is to you. Go in peace today knowing that you are pursued and you are loved.